Hey guys, I'm Tanya and we're going to talk today about helping our little kids deal with very big emotions in a healthy way and a healthy environment. So I am incredibly passionate about talking about this because I know what it feels firsthand to be punished and shamed and told that I'm not allowed to feel my feelings. So my goal is to help you teach your kids how to feel their emotions and then ultimately deal with them in a very healthy manner. Now, for those of y'all who may not know me, I'm the founder of Helping Hearts Homeschool. My name is Tanya Johnson. And what I did is I created a company to help specifically homeschool moms get a handle on their time, get some freedom with their finances, and then put the joy back in their homeschool all around. I saw way too many homeschool moms who were not enjoying the journey, and that is something that I am super passionate about when it comes to homeschooling. I think it is supposed to be fun and free and light and not this like super heavy burden on the family. So as I mentioned, I'm passionate about this subject because I was never taught to deal with my emotions. In fact, I was often shamed and even punished for feeling things like sadness or anger or anxiety. So that is something that I don't want my child to experience. In one of my earliest memories of this, I was between the ages of four and six. I don't have an exact date, um, but it is the earliest time that I specifically remember thinking, okay, like maybe I'm not allowed to cry. Maybe I need to stop doing that. So for this particular instance, my dad was in the hospital and it's worth noting he had congenital, congenitive, I don't remember, heart failure. Basically, it was very, very serious. And every time he would go into the hospital for a procedure, which was usually once every two to three months, um, we would be told, like, tell him bye. This may be the last time that you see him. He died several times on operating tables. We were told about this. Side note, don't tell your kids about that kind of stuff. Um, not... Don't tell your kids like they're going into the hospital, but maybe keep some of the heavier stuff away from like a five-year-old. Um, but all that to say, it was very understandable that I had a lot of anxiety around this. Now, anytime my dad would go in the hospital, it would had to be three hours away because we lived in like podunk middle of nowhere. So he would go to the hospital and my mom would go with him. We would stay with family members. Now, the family members we stayed with were not exactly healthy adults that should have been raising kids or watching other people's kids or all of the above. And for this particular instance, I remember going to my aunt and uncle's house and I was fairly good up until bedtime and for whatever reason, like nighttime tends to bring on the anxiety and maybe just cause it's quiet and like you're alone with your thoughts or whatever. But I specifically remember started crying, having a panic attack. Now as an adult, I know it was a panic attack. As a child, I didn't know it was wrong. I just knew I could not stop crying and physically like shaking. So I was told multiple times, stop crying, stop being a baby. And eventually he called another family member to come get me and basically was like, take her. Like she's not obeying, she's not listening, she's causing trouble. So he came and picked me up and I remember crying the whole car ride over because he was visibly irritated that he had to come and get me in the middle of the night. So again, felt like I was a burden and like I was doing something wrong because I had emotions around this situation. And I remember we got to their house and I was told, go to the bedroom, you better stop crying because if you wake my kids up, I'm gonna give you something to cry about. And so I went to the bedroom and I did not stop crying, but I was quiet about it and somehow went to sleep. And I remember thinking that night, I need to learn how to stop feeling these emotions. And what that led to was me learning because realistically that's when survival mode kicked in. And I was like, okay, I have to stop being emotional. So I learned how to shove them down as far as they possibly could go until ultimately they would blow up. And that also led to me turning to devices as a teenager to numb the pain because inevitably the blowups would happen. And as a teenager, you have a lot more emotions as well. So they bubbled up quite frequently and it was just a very unhealthy view around emotions. I did not learn how to cope with my emotions in a healthy way until after I was actually married. So thinking on, <laughs> I laugh now because I don't like, oh, my husband is a saint. Um, I can remember being newly married and 
nothing would be wrong. And then all of a sudden I would just blow up at my husband. Now this is what he was seeing on his end. My end, little things would annoy me, little things would make me angry. I was a newly married wife, right? Like this is very, very normal to have lots of emotions during this season of life. But I thought that I could not tell him any of this stuff because I was being ungrateful. That I wasn't allowed to be sad or mad or irritated because I should be happy that he chose to marry me. Now he never made me feel like this. But it had been ingrained in me for so long that that's what I felt. And then I would blow up at him because I couldn't keep it in any longer. Having said all that, I learned a bunch of coping techniques. I did therapy. Um, I learned how to deal with my emotions in a very, very healthy way all around. And then thank God that I did because about a year and a half into our marriage, our little bundle of joy came out. And obviously, you know, babies in general are fussy and one and two year olds, you know, they in general have emotions, but I now have an eight year old that has huge emotions. She is 100% her mom's child. She is an emotional creature and I never wanted to make her feel shame or that her emotions were a burden. I decided to end the cycle of shaming right there because with my past, I was taught that emotions were shameful and were a burden and were things that you should be punished for. And unfortunately, my parents were taught the same things by their parents, even if it was subconsciously. I realize I am the extreme in my story. Most of our kids are not going through what I, what I experienced as a child, thankfully. But I see firsthand kids getting shamed or getting made fun of or getting teased for their emotions. And that is something that I 100% chose to end the cycle for my family. But further than that, I chose to help other moms either end the cycle, if that was what was being taught, even subconsciously in you know their homes and their parents' homes and grandparents' homes. But maybe it's not being taught. Maybe you feel like, oh, I have a healthy hand on my kids' emotions. This is just a nice little refresher course to maybe add a few extra tools into your toolbox. So I've got four thoughts that I want to share with you and these are four things that every single parent needs to be told when it comes to helping their children navigate those really big emotions. So the first one is don't ever categorize emotions as good or bad. Emotions are not good. Emotions are not bad. Emotions are chemicals in your brain that come at you. It's not a choice. Now, I realize there's a little more science to that because I did look it up to double check that I was correct. Um, and it, you can Google it, it's, it's smarter than I am, put it that way. But I know for a fact it is not a choice. It is something that our brain does something and it causes an emotion to flow through us. So again, not good or bad, not something that our children are doing to annoy us or to see what kind of reaction that will give them. It is just something that is happening to their little bodies that they probably don't understand and it's our jobs to help them navigate that. Now, something that we do and we started doing early on is just talking about our emotions. We talk about how we feel when certain things happen and then we also talk about what emotion is attached to that because it's not just happy or sad, there are so many emotions. It's like colors of the dang rainbow. Um, and I do want to say, because I forgot to say this in the beginning, there is a blog post attached to this. So it is going to be linked in the Facebook group. If you're watching this live for the um, summit, then go to the Homeschool and Humor Summit page, the group, I forget what it's called, and you find my post. I posted it literally, whatever day you're watching this, I posted it this morning. The thumbnail that I posted, the picture I posted in the group this morning, it literally says the title of this. So it says, helping your little ones deal with big emotions or something to the effect of that. And so the blog post is listed in there. I've got a couple cool freebies for you guys that you can get from there. Um, just resources to help you with this topic. So one of the things I have for you is actually an emotion calendar. So this is something we started doing early on. I fell in love with it. I think it helped my daughter a lot. All it is is seven days, so seven columns, and there are tons and tons of emojis to portray different feelings. 
So what we do is we sit down when we do our journaling time, which for us is usually mid-afternoon. Um, for example, it's 2.30 right now, probably around four, we'll be sitting down to do our journaling and our devotions. So during that time, we pull out the calendar and there's two slots per day. So today, for example, the day that I'm filming this, probably not the same day of the week that you're gonna be watching it, but the day of the week that I'm filming this is Wednesday. So we're gonna sit down and talk about last night and this morning. So what happened last night? What are some things we did? How did you feel about that? And we'll talk through it for a couple seconds. She'll glue the emoji on whatever the appropriate emoji is for that day. Then we'll say, okay, what happened this morning? What are some things that we did? What are some emotions that we felt? and we'll glue the appropriate emoji. So I've made that up for you guys. You are welcome to print it out as many times as you want. Um, there is a color version and there's a black and white version. And it's something that sometimes it only takes five minutes because nothing really happened a whole lot in your house and your kid was just happy or sad or whatever. Sometimes it's gonna spark a 30 minute conversation and you're gonna have an impromptu lesson that you did not expect, but it's gonna be very healthy dialogue between you and your child. So I'm gonna actually tell you about one that we did because this was like completely out of the blue. So we're sitting and we're doing our journaling and we pull out the emotional calendar and we're talking through our emotions. And this was the week, this was probably a couple weeks before Christmas. So we pull out the emotion calendar and we talked about the night before and she was happy and she was excited and she, you know, put the little thing on there. She typically picks happy or excited or surprised. She's a pretty happy kid. We have pretty good life and um, we are very blessed and we are super thankful for that. However, I never want to take for granted that she still has big emotions, even if the things that happen in her life are not big to me because I'm 33 and I've dealt with a lot more than she has. She's eight. So certain things are going to elicit big emotions for her that we as adults would look on the outside and be like, don't be dumb, that's not a big deal. Now, this goes for children and teenagers. You never wanna make your children or your teenagers feel like their emotion is not valid just because you don't understand it. You don't wanna downplay their emotions or they'll stop telling you their emotions. And now, it might be something small. When they're 15, 16, 17, it might be something big that they would have told you, but you spent their whole life downplaying their emotions, so now they're not gonna tell you. And that could be something big that could lead to something even bigger. So you always wanna make sure that the dialogue is open when it comes to emotions and choices and all that good stuff. So this particular day, the night before she was happy, that morning we had gotten an Amazon package, which is not uncommon for that time of the year. Like they come like candy in the mornings. And I had brought it in, I had opened it. It was one of her Christmas presents, so I put it in my bedroom. So we had a conversation, okay, what has happened today? And she kind of went through her day, okay, I got up, I ate breakfast, um, we did a little bit of school, the Amazon guy came, I did my responsibilities, and now we're doing devotions. I was like, okay, so we looked through all the emotions, because again, we have sadness, we have anxiety, we have sick, we have worried, which I know worried and anxiety are the same thing, but again, you wanna teach your kids different words for the same emotions. We have happy, we have excited, we have surprised, we have mad, we have angry, lots of different words on there. So we go through what she did, I was like, okay, well, you weren't sick, probably not like mad or angry. Um, I was like, so probably what, happy, excited? She goes, um, yeah. I was like, no, it's, like obviously she wanted to say something. I was like, no, it's fine, what's up? Like what it, she's like, well, when the Amazon guy came, I kind of felt mad because you wouldn't show me what was in the box. Now me, as a mom, I was like, I mean, that's kind of a dumb reason to be mad. It's Christmas present, but, I would never tell that to my child because that is her emotion and she's allowed to feel it. And so I was like, okay, do you want to put down mad or angry then? She goes, well, is it okay? Is it going to make you feel bad if I put that I was angry? And immediately I was like, no, like whoever, no, it, first off, it doesn't matter. It's not about me. This is your emotion. This is your feeling. It doesn't matter how it makes someone else feel. So the first conversation that sparked from that was you never have to ask permission to feel your feelings. You feel that way, you express that, period. You feel, you felt it, like your body reacted in a certain way, but I am not gonna be sad or mad because you have a certain feeling. Like, that's not okay. It's not okay for me to shame you and make you feel like it's not okay to feel your feelings, which we already kind of talked about. 
And then that's also where the conversation came up of just a reminder, because we've done, we've had this conversation before, that feelings in themselves, emotions are not good or bad. Feeling the feeling of anger is not a bad thing. It's a feeling. Now, what you do to react to that feeling could be a bad thing, but that's a whole different part of this. Right now, we're just talking about feelings are not good or not bad, and we need to make sure our kids understand that and that we empower them to feel whatever feeling that they're feeling. Y'all say that 20 times fast, feeling that they're feeling. Um, so first thing that you need to know as a parent, helping your little ones deal with really big emotions is just, they're not good or bad, they're just emotions. Now the second thing, and we already hit on this, but this is such an important part. I'm gonna make it a whole point and I'm gonna say it again. No one should ever feel ashamed for feeling their emotions. So number two is let them feel them. No boy should ever be called a sissy because he cries or because he is sensitive. No girl should ever be asked, oh, is it just that time of the month? That's probably why you're irritated. Because they're irritated or they're annoyed or they're angry. Don't categorize our kids. Don't treat them like they should fit in one little box when it comes to their emotions because God gave us a rainbow of emotions. Every kid is gonna be a little different, every adult is gonna be a little different, and nobody should ever be shamed or made fun of or teased for feeling what they're feeling. Again, if you want your kids to come and talk to you, you better not make fun of them when the hard times come and they're having a meltdown in front of you. And then that brings me to number three, which is never punish your kids for their emotions. Again, I can't say it loud enough. Emotions are not good and they're not bad. Now, what we need to teach our kids, and it is beyond important, that they understand that emotions and actions are two different things. For example, is it okay to cry because we're disappointed? Yeah, absolutely. It's 100% to cry. It's allowed to have a healthy conversation with whoever disappointed you. It's allowed to have a healthy conversation, maybe your mom and dad, if someone else disappointed you. Yes, feel the feelings. You'll never be punished for that. On the flip side, is it okay to feel disappointed and then because you feel disappointed, you decide to stomp your feet, throw things, break things, and yell and scream about how mad you are and how unfair life is and how stupid the person is that canceled your plans or whatever happens. No, that is no longer an emotion. That is an action that you chose. Glory knows she will never be punished for her emotions. She will, however, be punished if she chooses to put a bad action with that emotion. They are two totally different things. And that brings me to point number four, which is teaching your kids good coping skills. Because you say, well, Tanya, if they're mad, then of course they're gonna stomp their feet and punch something. Okay, if you honestly believe that, I would suggest you also looking into, into some coping skills because none of us have the right to react negatively where it's going to harm another person or another thing just because we're feeling a certain emotion. That's not a thing. So we need to teach and we need to learn good coping skills. Now, you can Google this. There's gonna be lists and lists out there. Um, I haven't looked at this yet because we've been practicing coping skills for her entire life. So I don't have like a source that I can just throw you to. However, I am going to look online and see if I can find something quickly that I will attach to the blog. So I highly recommend just making sure that you check out the blog. Um, again, it is going to be linked with this section in the Facebook group. You can also just go to helpingheartshomeschool.com and with that, you're gonna pull up my website, click on the homeschool section and on the blog. And I will have this posted right up there for you so you can find it very, very easily. So coping skills, a few things that we do, and this, this is not exhaustive. Like I said, you can Google and you're gonna get lists and lists and lists of things. But a few things that we do that really work well for us, anytime my daughter is feeling any kind of emotion, that could elicit a negative action. So sadness, madness, um, anger, irritability, frustration, 
pretty much any of those. Usually when they're, she's happy or excited or surprised, like she's not wanting to react negatively. <laughs> so I'm using those emotions because they're usually the ones that you attach the negative actions to. So taking a walk outside, coloring, reading a book, saying, hey mom, I just need some quiet time. Can I go to my room? I'm feeling very angry right now. Like that is 100% something we teach in our home. And I don't care if it's in the middle of whatever it is, she's more than welcome to communicate with me that she needs some quiet time and I will respect that. And I wouldn't expect anything less from my husband if I was having a bad day or having a bad moment and I said, hey babe, I know we're in an argument or a disagreement right now, but I am feeling very angry and I need some quiet time to cool down. I'm gonna go to my room for like five minutes and then I will come back out and finish the conversation. You are being respectful and you are setting a boundary at that point. And that's something that our kids need to be allowed to do so they can carry that over into their adult life and their adult relationships. Healthy boundaries also comes with coping with emotions. Um, so that's one thing, one coping skill we teach is just the communicating side of it of, hey, I need to go have some quiet time. And then playing a game, listening to music, those are a couple other things as well. Um, now, I wanna say this because 99.9% .9 of y'all those coping skills will work with your kids. You might need to practice them a little bit. It might not be like a right away thing. But if you put those to use and you put the different things that we talked about in this lesson to use and nothing is working or your child is physically harming himself or harming someone else or is being destructive to property and nothing's getting better, your kid's not broken, However, I would recommend seeking professional help, at least for a little bit. It could be one of two things. It could be that they have a legitimate mental illness, which is a thing that they need help higher than what you can give them, at least in the beginning. And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. We all want what's best for our kids. Sometimes that is asking help from somebody else. Now, more often than not, they don't have a mental illness, but it very well could look like that because their emotions have gone unchecked for so long that they physically do not know how to rein them in. And that was the case with me. I had gone unchecked for so long and had no coping skills that I needed someone professional to be able to like ground me and teach me how to turn around and do that with myself. So um, I just want to put that in there. I don't want to scare anybody. Most of this, most of you guys, this is going to work for your kids. I'm only putting that in there because I want to raise awareness that there are going to be those cases that it doesn't matter what you do. It's not going to work. And that may mean you need to seek outside help. And again, I want to empower you to do that because there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So I hope that this is a benefit to you. I really hope you guys like the emoji calendar. My daughter thinks it's so amazing and it's just a fun way to get your kids to open up and talk about their emotions. So have an awesome rest of your week. Again, I don't even know what day this is going up, but I appreciate y'all tuning in and I will see y'all in another video or another summit or over on my website. Talk to you soon.